Mr. Wenning, can you give us a summary of the fourth quarter and the full year results 2022? Yes, um, let's uh, start with the fourth quarter. Uh, let's start with net sales. Um, net sales were, came in about 6.4 billion, which is about the mid-range of uh, our guidance. Um, however, we were able to accelerate what we call fast shipments on deep UV, also in Q4, uh, which actually, um, uh, actually was, a, quite a, was quite a, a significant number because if you would add the fast shipments to the 6.4, then the normalized sales for, for Q, Q4 would have been 7.4 billion. Now, for the total year, uh, 21.2 billion in uh, sales. Um, of which about 3.1 billion of fast shipments went into 2023. Now, so the net effect of the fast shipments plus the revenue of 21.2 is give you, would give you a normalized revenue if you would have booked the fast shipments as uh, revenue of 24 billion, which is quite a significant increase as compared to last year. So that's on the system, or that's on the total uh, sales. On installed base, um, about 1.7 billion of installed base uh, uh, sales, which is higher than our guidance. But that has to do with the fact that we had a pull-in of uh, what we call uh, uh, field upgrades. And field upgrades from Q1 into Q4, which gave us an extra boost in sales uh, in installed base. Now, on uh, uh, the gross margin, the gross margin, uh, good gross margin number, 51.5% uh, in Q4. Uh, that is also the result of the pull-in of these field upgrades, because they're high margin. Uh, and we had a one-off, uh, which basically we got an um, a, um, uh, insurance uh, a settlement on the Berlin fire, which happened last year. So that was a one-off. Um, so for the total year, 50.5% um, gross margin. Uh, pretty good. Uh, net income, because that's the result of uh, the gross margin and all the cost, uh, well, 1.8 billion in uh, Q4 uh, and 5.6 billion for the year. Um, on bookings, uh, bookings were good in Q4. Uh, we booked over 6 billion uh, in terms of uh, booking, leading to a record backlog by the end of 2022 of over 40 billion. We've never seen that before. So a record uh, you know, backlog. So you peel it off and you look at the year and you look at the quarter, that actually was quite a good year, good performance, and there's some challenging circumstances. Can you provide your initial outlook for this year, 2023? Yes, like I said, uh, some challenging circumstances that we're currently facing. I mean, uh, clearly there's a fear of a recession um, that's driven by high inflation, high interest rates, uh, geopolitical confrontations, uh, discussions about export controls. Um, on top of that, we see uh, a uh, weaker uh, demand for consumer-related products, such as smartphones and PCs. Uh, we see some lower growth rates in the data center uh, domain, but strong demand and still in the industrial space, uh, for instance, uh, automotive. So all in all, if you look at the situation today, uh, it's not a surprise that our customers are currently seeing inventories rise yeah, because we see a lower demand in some of these areas, so inventory for chips are going up. And what's then the natural reaction what customers are doing to, to actually swiftly turn that is to reduce the utilization of the machines uh, in the installed base. This is what we're seeing. We're seeing that the, insta the, the utilization rates of our tools is going down our customers are swiftly adapting uh, their output uh, to reduce inventory. And by doing that, they hope and they expect that uh, the industry will then recover in the second half of the year. Now, that's being helped, potentially helped also by the recovery of the Chinese economy coming out of the COVID crisis. You know, uh, this is an expectation that the industrial activity and thereby semiconductors will actually uh, go up again in the second half of the year. So, all in all, customers are expecting a better second half of 2023. What does it mean to us? Basically, um, the situation for us is that the demand that we're currently seeing because of this is still much higher than what we can make. So why are we not affected then? Well, it's a very simple conclusion that the expectation of the duration of a potential recession uh, in the minds of our customers is much shorter 
-hmm. than the average lead time of our machines. Because they want to prepare, because of the strategic nature of our uh, uh, machines for an upturn in the second half of the year and 2024. That means that the demand is still higher than what we can make. And that means that our plan is still to produce 60 EUV systems this year, and 375 deep UV systems, about 25% immersion of that 375, which actually means that we will see a significant uh, step up uh, in the 2023 uh, uh, you know, sales numbers. And if you split it out yeah, in, in, in over the different uh, business sectors, then you'll see that EUV business will probably grow about 40%. The non-EUV business about 30%. Installed based business will see some lower growth rates. It's logical. The utilization rates in the factories first half of this year will be down, so not a lot of field upgrades. It's about 5%. Now when you add it all up, we think that 2023 could give us an increase in sales of more than 25% over 2022, which is a significant step up from where we are today, which is under the circumstances a pretty good foresight. What's your guidance for this quarter, Q1? Well, on Q1, basically Q1 is also a, re a reflection of a very strong Q4. And what I mean with this is that we expect sales between 6.1 and 6.5 billion, about 1.5 billion of install base sales. But like I said earlier, there has been a, you could say, an acceleration of deep UV shipments from uh, in Q4. They come from Q1. Uh, it's the same is true for uh, f field upgrades, so from uh, Q1 2023 into Q4. So that is why um, we, 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 we see this, this sales number not significantly higher than uh, the fourth quarter. However, because we do see more than a 25% increase for the total year, you, you could expect a growing quarterly sales numbers throughout this year. Um, from a margin point of view in Q1, between 49 to 50%. That's basically the, the reflection of lower installed uh, base uh, business, basically because of the upgrades, which is high margin business. What are your expectations for your gross margin for the full year 23? Um, yes, I mean, uh, we, we saw 50.5% for the total year 2022. Now there's a couple of building blocks for the gross margin in uh, 2023. Um, the first one is the volume, the higher volume. You know, we have a higher volume uh, from 23 as compared to 22, which means that in EUV and in deep UV will have a positive impact on the gross margin because of higher volume. Um, on installed base, uh, we see lower growth rates, as we explained, uh, and we see then, I think, a, a, a lower level of field upgrades, which is high margin uh, business. So that could have a slightly negative effect on the gross margin for this year. Um, inf in inflation, it's on people's mind. But we do believe this year we, there will be a kind of a net zero effect because yes, we'll have higher inflation costs, but also we have inflation compensation from customers. Um, and then the last point, uh, we do will see higher cost levels. And it has to do with the build out of the capacity that we need, not only for 23, but for 24 and 25. Uh, and that is the capacity build out in EUV, in deep UV, and in high NA. That will lead to higher cost levels. So, um, the year will start Q1, gross margin between 49 and 50 percent, but that will gradually increase throughout the year. I would like to add to that, that that is in fact on the trajectory towards our gross margin um, that we gave as a guidance for 25 at our Capital Markets Day which we believe by that time, 2025, will be between 54 and 56 percent and uh, between 56 and 60 percent by 2030. So we're well on track. You just touched on it, the discussion around export controls, the situation, the geopolitical situation between China and the US. Can you give us an update? Yes, um, I think, you know, you said it's geopolitical. So we're business people, we're not politicians. Yeah? So, uh, but I'd like to refer, I think it was, there was, a, there was some good comments made by our Dutch Prime Minister last week when he visited Washington and spoke to the US President. And actually, the summary of his comments were, you know, this is a multinational uh, uh, question that needs to be answered. Yeah? It's an issue between several countries, not only 
the Dutch and the Americans, but several countries. And also, it's, it's multiple companies are involved with a complex supply chain, upstream and downstream. It's a complex industry. In, in, in fact, what, what, he, what, he, what, he, what he said, it's a complex issue, it's a sensitive issue, there's a, there's a lot at stake, yeah, there's, there's high uh, economic stakes, so we have to find a balanced uh, solution, um, and that's, I think, where the politicians are. But I think it's a fair reflection of where we are, and uh, I think there were some good comments made. Now, of, of course, there have been media uh, um, um, uh, articles coming out that basically uh, speculating and suggestions on what the potential outcome could be, but we just have to look at the facts. The facts are that nothing really changed since the October regulations that came out of uh, the United States, which actually means that we, can, we will not ship EUV to China, for instance, but we can still ship deep UV and metrology and inspection tools. And, you know, any further speculation on of what might the outcome be is, I think, doesn't help. I mean, we just have to wait for the governments and the politicians to keep talking and come to a, uh, to a reasonable solution. That's where we are today. Can you update us on your capital allocation plans? Yes. Um, our capital allocation plans are actually quite consistent. You know, we, we will generate a lot of cash because the company will grow quite substantially. And of course we will first use our cash to build the business. Yeah? And when we've done that, we'll use the cash to pay a growing dividend. And any other cash left, we'll buy back shares. Now, and on the dividend, um, we'll propose uh, to the general meeting of shareholders a closing dividend uh, of uh, €1.69, which will bring the 2022 dividend to €5.80. And for Q1, we're going to uh, pay an interim dividend of €1.37. Now, that's for the dividend. On share buybacks, we've announced that the Capital Markets Day, our $12 billion program uh, for the next three years. And like I said, you know, any excess cash, when we've used it for our business and paid the dividend, we'll use for the share buybacks. What are your expectations uh, regarding demand and your business beyond 2023? Well, I think the, the medium to longer term future of the company is, um, is very bright. I mean, it has to, it, it's driven by the fact that semiconductor applications are growing um, at, a, at, a, at a significantly accelerated speed. Think about the big societal problems, whether it's electrification, the, 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 the uh, digital revolution, it's the, uh, the energy transition. Everything you touch is semiconductors. And I think um, it's, it's clear, also not the way that we look at the you know, world, but also what analyst firms have looked into, that this industry of our customers, the semiconductor industry, will grow to a trillion, a trillion plus dollars by 2030. It actually means that we need to be able to provide our customers with systems and, and, and with services that will help them to, to make that output. And that's also why, as we said at the Capital Markets Day, we will and we are continuously with our supply chain investing um, for a capacity of uh, 90 EUV systems and 600 deep UV systems by the 2025-2026 timeframe and 20 high NA systems, your next generation EUV by 2027, 2028. So if you take it all together, that, uh, and then depending on whether we're in a high market or a low market by 2025, by 2025, we could be anywhere between 30 and 40 billion in sales. And also depending on where, whether we would be in a, in a lower or a higher market by 2030, we think we'll be between 44 and 60 billion sales by that time. So no matter how you look at it, semiconductors are positioned uh, extremely well when it comes to growth and helping some of the large and the big solutions for the big problems that we all face. And I think so, we are looking forward to a very bright future. Um, and perhaps, yes, of course, there will be short-term issues that we have to deal with, but mid to long-term very bright uh, future and very strong growth.